because we did have TSM on the right hand side the first match, correct? Yes. All right, so CRS, wake up! Wake up, guys! Wake up! Now it's going to be, uh, you know, they're, they're they're each in rooms right down the hall from us, so we could theoretically go down there and yell at both of them and be could, like, "Let's get this going." The viewers are are growing uh, are growing angry. Yeah, they asked why we're not friends. Um, Wait. I didn't get to see the other ban. Was there another um, ban? Going out there. Um, if if both teams don't object to it and they know what's going on. Um, actually, you're, you're the best message right there. And you, we'll find out real quick. And who did they ban? Uh... <laughs> Nocturne. Nocturne. Yeah, Nocturne okay. was banned. Um, so we have Alstar and Nocturne are the pre-bans before going into the, the draft mode here. We do have Soraka being banned out um, by TSM, actually. They're like, especially you're just too good. We need to give oh, you yeah. a handicap here. And then lower you down. obviously Dyrus being too good on cannon as <laughs> well. Too, too good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that heal on Dyrus was probably the most clutch play It was in, in the game. Well, second maybe to the to the double Zanyas yeah. of Morgana and Cannon. It's definitely good highlight footage. I know. Great highlight footage. Boom. V v Curse video team. Curse video Do team. It. You guys, be best, you guys got your hands best full. Best be ready for this because we got some plays for you. Um, exactly. And we didn't take down timestamps or anything. They're going to have to go through the entire video yeah. and find it themselves. <laughs> Exactly. Man, we suck. <laughs> so hey. Soraka and Urgot being banned from TSM. Urgot, a popular ban against these uh, European players because mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. love Urgot. Yep. They love Urgot. Especially Slepper. Slepper is a fantastic Urgot. You well, know? I, I know um, uh, Chaos actually likes Urgot a little bit too, but um, I'm assuming they just want to ban it out because they suddenly want to deal with it versus an EU team. Oh, yeah. Um, but again, we're seeing the cannon ban. Quite obvious, as we already talked about. Vlad ban again. Quite obvious. Those are two Dyrus oriented bans uh, for the most part. Um, but actually... Reggie can play a pretty decent cannon too, from from my experience. I know he actually is just Banniverse TSM cannon. <laughs> so Kennen, Vladimir, Jax. Jax. All Dyer Civil Jack, Champions. Jax is yeah. <laughs> the all champ yeah, pretty much. This is let's play Banno Dyrus. Um we are gonna see Janna being first picked by TSM here. Um Janna, as we talked about, is not so much of a laning phase uh, support as more of a team fight support. Uh, the ability to kite with her, her global passive, makes chasing so much harder. You wouldn't think 3% makes a difference. It makes a huge difference. The, the global on her is just amazing. Um, and again, the team fight is just so good for, for restarting fights and just, and just really controlling uh, a team fight. Um, but they did leave Shen open, um, so they are going to be picking up Shen and Kogma. Those are two huge picks. Um, Shen's global presence and Kogma's damage that could be AP Cog made, that could be anything. That could be that could be AD Cog. Either way, Kogma, as we know, has just been terrorizing um, competitive scene for for a very a long, long time, time actually, yeah. like a really long time. And they managed to get Shen, so um, I'm not sure if they really wanted to first pick that Jen was the best choice. Um, because they did have these two great picks left open, and um, right now I'm I'm pretty confident in what they pick so far. <laughs> I know Shin Shin is great, and, and Kamal is great, and like you said, they're both ambiguous champions. Shin can jungle, Shin can top, mm -hmm. Kamal can mid, Kamal can bot. Mm -hmm. So really, TSM has no idea where either of these champions are going nope. right now. You know, like they can have a general consen consensus of what they're doing because predominantly uh, you do see a uh, AD cog more, and you do see. Shen top lane more, but again, as you said, could be middle. Could exactly. Be jungle, you don't know yet. And Leona potentially picked up as a support. Well, well let's talk about the Graves Nautilus picks first because yes. those just happened. Uh, Nautilus, uh, Dyrus, I've seen Dyrus and Solo Q play Nautilus up top. You have? Oh, I, I'm actually a big fan of Nautilus up top. Um, it hasn't picked on too much yet, um, but I'd, I would love to see Dyrus play Nautilus top. He's predominantly played as a jungler because his clear and his ganks are just really good. Like His, his ganks, I mean, Let's put four CCs on a champion. Oh, yeah. And then give him red buff. <laughs> and then give him a hook to pull stuff in. Why the heck not? And yeah. then, and then <laughs> a great knock-up in his ultimate. Yeah. Let's, just, let's just do... Let's and his passive is so good. snare, knock-up, pull. And pull. And then, like, just, a, just some extra deeps in a shield. Yeah, this, yeah. Let's just throw it all together. Like, a shield that scales well, off bonus health. Yeah, what else does this guy just need? He needs to be more tanky. With, like, you know, <laughs> he needs to scale with his tank. You know? Yeah. So, very, very disgusting. But, but potentially fantastic. could be jungle as well. Depending yeah. on what these last two mm -hmm. picks are here. 
Now, as far as Curse EU is concerned, Leona and Ari being locked in there. I have Ooh. seen Saint play a lot of Ari so far on Saint, his stream. Saint does play a lot of Ari. I think he's he's really comfortable. And Ari is a fantastic pick. She does. Ari is one of those champions that just scales in the late game so well. So, like, let's just look at the two teams here. Nautilus kind of falls off late game. Graves, pretty good late game, but nothing compared to a Kogma. And then we have um, Janna. And then we have Ari. Scales great to late game. Leona scales late into great late uh, late, late game. Late into great game? Yeah. You know what I'm talking <laughs> about. Don't make fun of my dyslexia. <laughs> You'll be okay. <laughs> Don't dyslexia make fun of me. Just because I can't proc talk okay? It doesn't mean you make fun of me. Okay? <laughs> but anyways, we got Leona. This is great. She scales with so much health. Her just pops her W. Gets all the resistance that she needs. All she needs to do is stack health, and she's a fantastic late, uh, late game tank. Um, Kog'Maw, as we all know, disgusting late game. Like, Brutal late game. And Shen, another great late game champion. Like, their late game is so devastatingly strong that if they make it there, TSM is in such trouble. But at the same time, they have really strong... Um, I, think, I think I'd actually have to give it to them, TSM in the first 30 minutes of that match. But if it goes past 30 minutes and CRS is you know, even, they're going to start taking the lead. That's how I feel about that. You think this game is pretty much going to go the same way then? You think it's going to be a pretty even matchup in I all do. lanes? And then it's going to be one... You know, one thing to start the tilt. Yep. And we do have Rise and Kale Top. Ooh. It's not going to be Nautilus Top. It's going to be Kale Top. Uh, I have seen, actually, Dyer's been playing some Kale Top. Uh, I think he's pretty comfortable with it. And Kale Top's actually starting to pick up um, some steam. It's, it's quite popular um, with the damage increase and, then, and just the mobility and the heal that they can do. Is, she's actually a pretty good top lane champion. Most definitely. And, I mean, her ultimate in team fights also is, is pivotal, you know. Being yeah. able to put one of your champions immune to everything, yeah. it is really, really good. Especially with, if you want to throw it on, throw it on Graves, who just you know rains down damage the entire time. If he's invulnerable, then yep. he can't be stopped. Or even, or you even know, rise. Yeah, I was gonna say that as well. Rise, and this is the Darius patch. So uh, you know, last patch rise was changed a little bit. He's got mm -hmm. some AP scaling now. His ultimate gives him bonus move speed. Yep. So uh, you know. As far as Ari is concerned, she's very mobile, obviously. She can go to lanes quickly. She can get off gank. She Fantastic has a lot of CC, Romer. stuff like that. With Ryze's ultimate change, do you see him as a kind of a, a more roamy character as well, or do you um, think he has to stay more put? He can roam just because he does have the CC. Um, as you did talk about, though, you did, the ultimate change does help a little bit. Um, but, again, it's, it's mostly with the W. Um, he's definitely not as mobile as Ari, though. I, I if we're going to see roaming ganks, it's probably going to come from Ari and less from Ryze, but they both can do that. And Reginald is a very, very aggressive AP mid. He loves to just push his stuff in. I wouldn't be surprised if he just blows his ulti, clears the wave, and tries to get gank uh, top or bottom. Yeah, we'll definitely see how it works out. Now, Young Buck picking up Riven again. He didn't have, I would say, the most incredible performance, but he definitely did admirably. Uh, do you think that's going to be a smart pick against Kale, or who do you think? I mean, Kale, like you said, not a big top lane champion that we see all the time, but we have seen... Uh, we have seen uh, Dyrus do it every now and then. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens against Kale and Riven. But first, right before we get into this game two of Curse EU versus mm -hmm. TSM in the Reign of Gaming Got International Invitational, we're going to go to some ads <laughs> really quickly. So we'll be back in just a second into game two. All right, we are here into game two. Curse EU, formerly Absolute Legends, I guess. Now Four they're under our guys. The team our guys. Known as Absolute Legends. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and this is going to be versus TSM. Game two, TSM was able to secure game one. And it looks like, oh, Chaos is going to face check that brush. I don't know if Shin picked up Taunt first. He didn't level anything. I don't know if he was kind of not watching there. I feel like if he had gotten a nice shadow dash off, that could have been a dead, dead great. Um, well, a lot of times you'll wait to see what you want to skill, and it's really like a, a reflex game at that point mm -hmm. because 
he doesn't want to start taunt, obviously, if he's jungling. Obviously. But he, if they're going to catch somebody, if like, for instance, if the, if Ari caught somebody, then he's going to skill that up. But, you know, again, that's reflexing. He didn't have to skill it up. In t- he didn't skill it up in time, so, unfortunately, he did get away. And that's a shame to have first blood pretty much slip through your fingers right there, you know? Yep. Because that would have been that would have been snowballs a great games. Taunt. It snowballs games a lot. Yes, it does. But both teams kind of just uh, corralling around the mid right now. Nothing really special happening. Again, boots, potions, boots, the potions. Standard build for pretty just standard about for any competitive play. Cursey Yu is going to do a little bit of an invade here. They may catch Dyrus in this brush, but he does see them on the other side of that wall, so he pulls back as well. Uh, I, are they going to steal these wolves? Looks like Maluno is going to steal these wolves straight from Odd One. Odd One is going to start down here at the race, and Cursey Yu does have a ward, so they're able to know that Nautilus was starting down there and able to pick it up themselves. Uh, in the meantime, they're also going to take blue buff straight away from Nautilus. Cyrus going really aggressive here. Malinu going to run up, though. Are they going to be able to stop this? Saint is coming in, though. Dyrus being so aggressive, though. Oh, and Saint not really doing anything. There. I, was, I thought he was going to blow a spell or do something. Oh, there's the charm landing on Dyrus. Uh, he might be fine here. He's going to take a lot of damage, and Leone is going to go out. Landing that, but they are going to be able to well, He might be able to pick it up. I don't believe he's going to tick down, and he's probably going to survive. And this, yes, he did. Um, that's unfortunate for CRS. They did the strong move there, um, but they are going to try to pick up this blue. Um, that's going to be a four. four oh, this CSN's not going to let it go. They're saying, hey, we're going to fight for this. Yeah, and it, it, uh, what they're doing here is, you know, if, if Maluno isn't able to smite this correctly and pick it up, they're just wasting uh, Cursey Yu's time right now. Mm-hmm. Dyrus is farming top. Odd One is going to take a lot of damage and get ignited, forced to burn flash over that blue buff wall. He's going to get out of there. Leona actually Leona able got to the pick blue. Up the blue buff. Leona so got the blue. We're about to see some Zenith Blades we're everywhere. See that, that is going to be spam bottom like nobody's business. Yes, indeed it is. Saint returns the lane with Reggio. He gets a charm off and pulls him almost into tower range. But Reggie is going to be okay right there. Maluno now coming in mid. He does pick up his Vorpal Blade first, though. So he doesn't have a taunt for this gank here. But uh, he does decide to go to his own race. He's probably going to pick up level 2, and then maybe we'll see a gank on the Reggie in mid. Reggie does have both his summoners, so it could be dangerous there. We'll see what happens. Up top, I mean, Dyrus was able to get a level advantage already on Riven because of the, the little skirmish they the had at Blue Ball. tiff they had. Yeah, exactly. And he's able to secure 10 CS right now. Riven only has 5, so he's got double Riven CS. And now Riven is forced to CS at her own tower, which is is not something you want to do all the time. Especially being so aggressive on the Liana. You can right, you see that right there, their blue buff. And uh, they're probably going to have to force him out here. Oh, but the Slipper is going to show up, especially taking lots of damage. He's going to throw up that shield, try to suppress as much damage as possible. Reginald flashing in there, getting a lot on Slipper. He's going to go down, though. And Zenik is going to take a lot of damage. He's not sure what to do. He's got the Ignite Blown on him. And Gray's probably going to pick him up. Nala's actually picking up that first blood. Oddman chasing him away. And then we do have, actually, Reginald going down to Slipper. But St. Vicious is still there. Got no mana, got no nothing. I'm not sure why he stayed there. And then he's going to get killed as well. He's going to go to the pickup. And that is going to be a 2-1. to one right now, but Malnu actually might go down. He's got the shield out. Will he get the last hit? He's actually going to flash away, not being able to pick up that last hit on him. Man, so that was... Uh, this is so strange to see how aggressive both teams both are being blues, in the enemy jungle. Blues. Basically, two team fights of blues. Yeah, these oh. blues are super important to both teams right now. Ooh. Odd one is going to pick up Percy. The dredge line does land on the Slepper. Just going around that wall, he is going to go down here, and he's not going to be able to take anyone down with the Akathian surprise. But he'll put out a little bit of damage. Why the a, little heck bit, a little bit, a little bit of true damage here. A little bit, yeah. a little bit further. Can't complain about that at the all. The aggressiveness. I know. This oh is my. crazy. You know, the first game was, I would say, uh, obviously more passive relative to this. <laughs> yeah, relative but, to this. But yeah. this, is, this is like Rambo Warzone or something this right now. Both teams really going hard, and it's, uh, it's very exciting. Three to one already at the five-minute mark. Uh, right now, TSM does have that advantage of two kills. Uh, Odd One was able to pick up the blue buff from Leona's corpse, I believe, mm-hmm. and also mm-hmm. the blue buff from the, the Curse EU jungle. So right now, he's wearing those blue buffs high and, uh, and, and pretty, pretty much. Same bitch is taking a little bit of damage from the, the overload of Reggie, being very aggressive in that lane. Reggie has uh, about 400 gold right now. Uh, not quite able to go back and buy anything just yet. But he's got potions. He's running out of mana slightly. And there's no blue buff right now to, to donate, of no. course. Uh, so he'll have to go back eventually. But, I mean, with Rise, of course, he's probably going to be rushing a tier of the goddess. So he can stack that up, get the max Most mana. Likely. and uh, And really, really pump his damage out. I mean, as far as Rise versus Ari is concerned, do you think Ari's going to pay whenever she tries to... Uh, 
to kind of dash in with her ultimate, she's going to get Rune Prison down and maybe burst it down? Um, it really depends. I mean, that's up to St. Vicious to know, like, obviously when to go in and when not to go in is such a huge factor. Because if you know, if you know a lot of uh, spells have been burned, that's when Arya can just go in and dive as hard as possible. So if, if she notices Reggie, oh yeah, I mean, he blows his, blows his spells on, you know, just some, like uh, anybody else, he can just dive in, he can make him pay for that, and that's really, you know, separating an amateur from a pro. Yeah, separating the men from the boys. Exactly. Right now. Uh. And <laughs> uh, uh, I don't uh. know what that noise was. I don't know <laughs> if I like noise. it that much. <laughs> now, uh, Saint, as far as the farm is concerned, St. Vicious does have 13 CS to Rise's 19, so not a huge uh, advantage or disadvantage for e either player right there. Uh, Kale up top, 32 CS, does go back and buy two Doran's Blades, while um, it looks like Shin... A Riven. Where's Riven? Riven. I don't Riven's see Riven's the bottom. It's there you really go. Really close to yes. So we're seeing a, a way better game for Young Buck here. Uh, he did get camp last game, and that is just an unfortunate thing that happens. And you really can't can't get yourself out of that slump when you get camped. Mm -hmm. You get camped top lane until you've actually experienced it as a player. When someone just sits top lane and doesn't let you see us, you don't know what it's like. And and it's gonna look like you did poorly, you can like that. But we actually have a little little bit of fight going on here bottom before we finish talking about that. And actually, that's gonna be nothing. So I'm gonna keep talking about what I was talking about. Up top, the <laughs> dire all a getting ganked and ignited, forced to go back uh, under mm -hmm. his own turret. And that's a good that's gank from Molino. And that's what I was talking about. If you get camped up, I mean, you really can fall behind. And if you fall behind as a top lane player, you get punished, as we saw from Riven last game. She didn't get any CS. She was just behind, and, and, and Dyrus on Kennen just, you know, kept getting higher, kept getting all this stuff, and he just snowballed to such a point where he... he did, I, don't think, I don't think Kennen died last game. I don't believe he died. Like, he did such I a good job. I think he may have died once. Maybe? Okay. Very, very low death. It, it, yeah, he had no deaths for the longest time, because I know at one time mm -hmm. he was like 4-0 and 6-0. Yeah. So, uh, but, but compared to, you know, the, uh, Riven top lane last game, it was just like, oh my gosh, you know? Like We're going to see a gank here from St. Vicious. He does burn his Spirit Rush ultimate to dodge that dredge line there. But I, it, I don't believe it has the longest cooldown in the world, so I think he's going to be okay. Uh, it does have a, a minute and 40 second cooldown. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if Nautilus decides to go in again, oh. and a long range collateral damage kill picked up there for Chaos. I guess we could probably go back and watch that, actually. See what happened to Xenek down here. Kaox gets the Janna Shield. He decides to quick draw in, get a nice ignite and buckshot oh, off in a look long at that range, range. Look at that damage. range. That's why I love. He, uh, he's actually my favorite AD carry is Graves uh, because of that. He played like a, he, I feel like I'm like I'm a caster when I play him. I just deal physical damage. It's awesome. Yeah, that was uh, that was a great play by Kax right there. Just knowing the potential of his champion, mm -hmm. knowing the range of collateral damage. You know, well when you get that shield on you, and and, and that's what they changed about Jana. They changed it so like oh. As soon as you lose that shield, you lose your damage. But, you know, he took no damage when he had that shield in. Mm -hmm. He offensively went into them, blowing all those spells on him, and you just, it was just too much to handle with that shield. That increased damage early game? Ooh, that yeah. hurts. That really chunks. You know, it's kind of the, the opposite, I would say, of, of Soraka. You know, her heals yeah. make you play more defensively because yep. it gives you a boatload of armor. You know, it, it can make you go on offensive if you'd like mm -hmm. because you're going to take less damage, of course. But Janna's shield is purely offensive compared yeah. to Soraka's heal. And uh, that's the key difference between both of them. You know? Yeah, well, I was actually kind of surprised with that with that bottom lane pick with Leona because Kogma is generally a, a farm up, you know, protect yourself late game champion, and and Le Leona is a let's go get kills lane. Mm -hmm. And, and I, don't, I don't think Kogma really has um, a, a kill kit. He's got a he's got a team fight kit. And that's what we're talking about. That's why Janna Kogma works so well, and that's why Gray's Leona works so together. So I almost feel like they should almost switch those support champions, and that bottom lane would be completely different and I'd go a lot. A lot better for both teams. I wasn't live for a second there for some reason. I apologize about that. But it looks like there's going to be a tower dive here onto Slepper. The depth charge does knock him way up into the air. And <laughs> and the tornado actually knocks Xenic up really, really high as well. He's going to get Rune Prison, trying to run back to the safety of his own turret. Tries to dodge him in the brush, buying St. Vicious some time to get here and enter into this team fight. Expecial taking a lot of damage. He may go down to this Ignite and a nice Vorpal Blade and Key Strike there. But St. Vicious is going to pay as well. He goes down to 301 situation. Maluno Ooh, gets pulled line. by the dredge line, locked down by the odd one pass. Oh. and the Rune Prison and followed up with a nice combo from Reggie is going to take great, him down as well. Great plays by TSM right there. Three for one exchange right there. TSM is looking really, really strong. Up six kills this early in the game. You know, we saw all the ridiculous aggression early game. Well, that, that's, really, that. that's really what happened is, is they were both so aggressive and one team was going to take the cake for the snowballing early game and TSM won that early game. So that's why we're seeing this progression um, going in like that. But we do have it uh, going out here top. The Youngbuck taking tons of damage from, from Kale, blowing his ultimate, but realizing he just wasn't un unable to take him down. Um, and he actually didn't even blow his ultimate there. 
I don't believe. No. But so uh, yeah, I think Young Buck just uh, underestimated his burst on Kale and what could he, what could be done, and uh, that's just unfortunate. You know, and it may just be uh, a case of Kale. You know, uh, as sad as it is to say, doesn't get played a whole lot, um, and she wasn't played post her change. You know how it shreds armor and magic just now on enemy champions hit. That may be something that Young Buck's not quite used to. You know, mm -hmm. if, if there's a champion that has an ability that you're not familiar with, you don't know really what what it'll do to you, uh, he may have just, like you said, just completely underestimated her damage mm -hmm. potential because as she gets those stacks on, coupled with her Q, which lets her do a percentage base more damage to you, it really stacks up. Well, it, it caught him by surprise. I'm not, I'm not sure, but I'm not... I'm Maybe Kale is. I'm not sure if Kale's even played in the EU scene currently. Really? I I I don't I think I've seen it a lot or at all in the EU scene. So he might not even know. You know, if you don't play versus a champion on and you don't know the matchup, it can really go badly for you. And that might have been what it was. I'm not sure, but hey, possibility. Yes, indeed. But it's 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 just those like you said, unorthodox picks sometimes work out well. You know, they really do. Maybe we'll see Eve this turn. <laughs> <laughs> or is that too unorthodox? Uh, um, if someone wanted to troll, I'd see it. Uh, <laughs> Most definitely. Uh, well, uh, now it looks like up top lane, Kale is kind of showing her dominance now. 70 CS, Riven has 79. So Riven's still hanging in there. Mm -hmm. uh, but one kill for Kale, zero kills for, for Riven. Kale does have the triple Doran's Blade stack right now, which, um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I don't know an incredible amount about playing Kale. But, I mean, stacking attack damage can't really hurt. Uh, her Righteous Fury makes her into a ranged champion, which yep. is really unexpected sometimes. And uh, Dyer's using that to his, his, his advantage right now. Just trying to zone out uh, Young Buck as much as possible from CS. But Young Buck still, like we said, 85 CS now to, uh, to Dyrus' 75. He's doing a really good job, and that's dreadline. Down bot, the, the dredge line does hit onto Zenith, followed by the Buck shot, and a long range collateral damage. Oh Will God. it work again? It does. Oh he doesn't quite pick up the kill, but Odd One is there to lay down his anchor right onto Zenith's face. Uh, very, very sad for Zenith. You know what? Right TSM's just been impressing me. Like, just thoroughly impressing me. Every one of their plays is, is top notch. You know, it's really, really good. Oh, we do have you going in your diary. It's going initiated here top. Now you're getting that CS off. But is, Kale is going to blow that Divine Intervention. She's taking no damage, so it's really ne negating uh, uh, Riven's ultimate there. So there's really just going to be him laughing off and going back to tower. Yeah, in the meantime, TSM picks up the first dragon of the game down there. So, you know, it, it's, it was kind of, uh, kind of bad for Curse of U to show that they have two players top, especially including their yep. jungler. That means mm -hmm. your smite is very, very far away from Dragon. Dyer's able to hold his own. You know, the best case scenario there is that uh, if you know, Dyer survived, you know, but oh. if those two members of Curse of U were able to Reggie, pick up the Reggie kill, Reggie going down very low, low take oh, the same fish down. Here's the Shin ultimate, stand oh. united. But in the meantime, they say, oh, you're oh. porting over there. We'll oh. lock you down here and kill you. Dredge line underneath the tower. Double kill from the odd one onto Reggie and onto St. Vicious and Maluna. That, that Lego Man skin, too strong. That was, ri that was really, <laughs> really. I liked how uh, Shin was stand united to Ari, and they were like, oh, we'll just change targets to you. Guess yeah. what? Look at all this CC. And it looks like Chaos and Special want to get a tower dive down here. They take down the tower Ooh. very, very quickly in the buckshot combo. Does bring Zinnick down super oh. fast, and there's the dredge line. Will he be able to pick up Expecial yes, with the Akathian? Oh, oh the flash! flash. <laughs> I love Expecial's flashes. <laughs> <laughs> that guy is doing so well with flash. He's showing why you take flash on every champion right there. Oh, my gosh. So impressive. <laughs> oh, man. Expecial. What a flash. I need, to, I, need to, I need to shake that man's hand after this game. I'll give him a hug. I'm going well, yeah, to stare him in the eyes and say... We're going to bring him in for an interview <laughs> and say, how do you feel about those do, flashes? Let's just get it special. Let's just get it special and just make oh, him yeah. feel awkward. Let's and get it. just like him so much. All right. <laughs> we're doing it. We're doing it. After this game, exclusive interview with Expecial. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be fantastic. As far as this game is looking, 14 kills to two. Curse EU. Sad. <laughs> Sad. That's unfortunate. You know? Um, I mean, you know, but they did have, I mean, they didn't have any time to show up. I mean, their player... He did show up late. He didn't have any time to set up or really get anything going here. He came in late. They missed their flights. And again, they don't even have their AP mid. So, I mean, you really can't just write this team off. I mean, they're basically playing with an unfamiliar sub that doesn't even play that type of role. So, Yeah, it is really, really unfortunate there. But, uh, you know... But not to say anything. TSM is playing, like, flawless oh, yeah, right now. Exactly. TSM is playing amazing. Exactly. Like. Exactly. This isn't a case of Curse of U, I think, playing bad. I think they're all playing fine. Mm -hmm. It's just a, it's just the case of, of TSM playing... God like playing like, better. That's you know really impressive play. This is this is honestly play I've like I have not seen out of any of the team. I mean I haven't been this impressed 
uh, fight team since like M5 at, uh, at Kiev. Really? That was really when I was super impressed with their, with their uh, uh, Lee Sin and, and Janna roaming plays. Those are sick. And TSM is just impressing me right now. And up top, they're just trying to do as much work as possible. Collateral damage does get a double kill. Ari and Leona go down. There's the triple kill. Can he take down Slepper and make it a quadra kill? No. Nope. Not if Dyrus has anything to say about it. The odd one almost goes down, but his Titan Shield does protect him from that last little bit of true damage there. So right now, you know, uh, that's an ace. <laughs> that's an <laughs> ace for TSM. And and exactly what we were saying before, you know, the the whole lineup changes that happened a few weeks ago where Hotshot, you know, went to jungle and all that stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The first game that CLG played with their new lineup, people were it was against EG. It was against yep. Epic Gamer. People were saying, oh, you know, this new lineup sucks. It's, yep. They're stupid. They yep. Hotshot's bad, blah, blah, blah. But it was the case that EG was at the top of their game playing so, so well. Oh, yeah. You know? EG's, EG's one of the... the most feared teams in, in NA right now. Yeah. Like, easily, just as, like, TSM and, and, and uh, ESM Tivo are just like, wow, right yeah. now. Like, they're really, they're really strong. Did you say ESM Tivo? Yes, yes, TSM. ESM yeah. Tivo, yeah. 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 There's lots of chain, name changing and all this stuff going on. A perfect dredge line coming out there, locking down St. Fish as he decides to burn the Spirit Rush away from the Nautilus, does not have his ultimate up yet, so not able to lock him down any longer. But... I mean, it's it's dire right now for Curse U. Mm. You know, this is uh, luckily for for all the teams. You know, like we said, Curse U coming in from from the European scene. They're mm. all kind of jet lag. They I know I talked to them earlier. They were all a little bit tired. Um, yeah. So the thing about it is, this is a round robin. So you lose you lose one match. You're not out by any means. No. This isn't. You're not eliminated or anything. You still have many more chances to play the entire uh, set of Ooh. teams that are here right now. And you can still be in this thing. So let's not count them out well, just Reggie yet. Could be tower dies going down Reggie here. will go down to oh. this tower damage combined with Slepper's fantastic uh, damage. Oh collateral damage. God, I collateral love that. Damage is <laughs> the collateral, collateral damage is, <laughs> is so good. Oh my God. It's so good. <laughs> uh, is he going to away? Is no. he going to get away? No. <laughs> collateral damage blowing up the screen. Well, see you later. Yeah, so uh, TSM, it's, it's really their game to lose at this point. Yeah. They're up 19 kills. You know, I don't want to say anything empirical. I'm I want to say TSM will win because that is awful. That's what you get flamed for. Yeah. Uh, but it's their game to lose at this point in time. 19 Real kills, uh, about 13K gold. And, and TSM such a such a, I think, a well-refined well team yeah. is how I, I call them now. Um, they really know when to go in, what to do. Um, their new manager really just put them in their place and said, you know, what are you guys doing? You live in a gaming house? Play like play like a real team. Play mm -hmm. like you need to be together, and that's what TSM has done since uh, the last IPL, and that's showing again that they're just they're just a team to be feared. Yes, indeed. Is that is that? Oh, yeah. That's a Majaz on Reggie. Oh, that's a Majaz on Reggie. Well, actually, I, I actually noticed that uh, when I casted um, the the round robin before this to get to the finals here, uh, that Absolute Legends mid extinct was actually picking up. Majize. Didn't he go Anivia, I think? Wasn't yeah. Anivia yeah, Majize? It might have been. It's something like that, but he, he was actually picking up Majize. He was. Like, I, that's his core build. Yeah, and I, and I <laughs> asked him, I said, you know, why did you do that? He's like, well, we were like 10 kills ahead, and we were just going to snowball from there, and Majize is the perfect item. I'm like, you know what? That makes sense. You know, it's, it's a really cocky item to get, because if you buy it and you lose that next team fight, I mean, you, you pay. You pay yeah. hard for that. But if you buy it and you win that next team fight, oh, that's just, that's like butter, baby. You know, that's good. Butter, <laughs> baby. <It's> butter. <laughs> is, that the, is that the new elements, like, uh, trademark line? I butter, baby. It's butter. It's butter. It's a Majize. It's, it's is butter, smooth. Apparently. It's smooth. <laughs> it's tasty. <laughs> <laughs> well, right now it's gonna be. <laughs> it's gonna be. It looks like TSM, uh, special has the oracles. He's kind of clearing up some wards at Baron. Uh, not really like they need it per se. Uh, the Baron will just be on the, the icing of the cake at this point in time. They're just gonna siege this mid turret really, really hard. They're waiting for Chaos to get here. The pull on the same vicious, but no follow up. But does burn uh, burn her ultimate. She decides to ultimate in. Onto I want special, but special uses the monsoon to blow both of them away. Reggie is focusing Zinnick, and he goes down very, very quickly. And there's the collateral damage that we've come to know and love. Picking up a double kill for Graves on Shin and Riven. And as we said, uh, uh, Rise just bursting down Zinnick oh, so, so fast. A there's a surrender. Out. 20 minutes surrender. 26 to 3. TSM. Too strong. Too strong. Too strong. Baylife, bro. Baylife, bro. Exactly. <laughs> you're, like a, you're like a Baylife <laughs> robot right now. <laughs> um, but that is game two. TSM does uh, does does take it, and uh, Curse you. It, it's so it's so unfortunate that they didn't have their their big AP mid here. Saint Vicious had to step in, but uh, it's that was a, those they are fantastic out, games. They aren't out. 